Hello. Today I will discuss the construction and working of uh, dye laser. Dye lasers use liquid organic dyes. That's why the name is dye laser. These organic dyes are dissolved in solvents like water, ethyl alcohol, methanol. The most widely used dye is rhodamine 6G, also known as xanthine dye. These lasers are discovered by Sorokin and, and his colleagues. Dye lasers operate without the intervening metastable state. This is the construction part. The dye laser consists of a 1 cm long quartz glass tube filled with solutions of organic dyes such as rhodamine 6G. Active medium Rhodamine 6G dissolved in a suitable liquid like water, ethyl alcohol, or methanol is used as an active medium. The dye solution used in the dye lasers typically has a concentration in the range of 10 raised to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 4 M. The rhodamine 6C emits in yellow red region. About active medium, about pumping source, please refer my earlier video lectures. Pumping source that is supposed to excite the medium, to excite the dye. Energy to excite the dye is supplied by a strong light source that may be a flash lamp or another laser like N2 laser or Arganyl laser. Thus optical pumping is used to excite the dye and to achieve population inversion. Optical pumping is also used in ruby laser. Optical resonator system or tunability. The most, power, most useful powerful feature of the dye lasers is their tunability. The tunability means that the lasing wavelength for a dye may be varied, that it can be tuned over a wide range. Due to this reason, dye lasers are also called tunable lasers. The tuning over 500 angstrom has been obtained. One of the techniques to obtain tuning is to replace one of the mirrors of the resonant cavity with a diffraction grating. Now what is a diffraction grating? Grating is an arrangement consisting of equidistant, opaque and transparent lines uh, to diffract the light. This dye cell is usually placed inside a cavity consisting of a partially reflective mirror on the front and a diffraction grating on the rear. A source light is focused onto the dye to excite it and stimulate laser action. By rotating the diffracting grating, wavelength of laser output can be altered. Thus tuning is obtained. Therefore this combination of partially reflective mirror and diffraction grating will act as optical resonator system and for optical resonator system please refer my earlier video lectures. For a radiation to be reflected back along the laser cavity axis, the angle theta that the normal to the diffracting grating makes with the cavity must satisfy the condition 2d sin theta equals to n lambda. This is a diffraction condition. This is basically a Bragg's law condition where d is grating spacing, lambda is wavelength of radiation. By rotating the grating, angle theta will be changed and thus the output wavelength will be changed that is tuning of output wavelength will be achieved. Working The molecules have singlet as well as triplet states. Each electronic state comprises of several vibration states and each vibration state comprises of several rotational levels. So electronic level, the sub level is vibrational and the sub sub level is rotational. Due to the absorption of light from pumping source, dye molecules get excited from ground state E1 to upper vibrational rotational levels of excited state E2, which is upper laser level. Most of the dye molecules decay to the lowest vibrational level L of E2 in a time of about 10 to minus 11 seconds. This process is due to thermal redistribution level E2. Thus, it is a non radiative process. Population inversion is achieved at level L. So, if you want to make the energy level for dye laser, so in simple terms, so this will be the E1 level, this will be the 
E2 level and the lower level will be this L level and the de excitation in tensor minus 11 seconds will happen from upper E2 level to lower E2 level and this will be a non radiative transition means there will not be any emission of radiations or photons. From level L of E2, the dye molecules decay to any higher lying vibrational sub level of E1. When this process occurs, then the radiation is emitted. This is termed as fluorescence. The lifetime of level L for dye molecules is about as so minus 9 seconds. As most of the molecules decay from level E2 by fluorescence, thus laser action occurs at the fluorescence wavelength. Thus laser output is achieved in between states E2 and E1, that, that is these two states. Okay, here the photons will be emitted. Molecules from the state E2 can also make a non radiative transition to the triplet level T1. This transition is known as inter-system crossing. This process of inter-system crossing can limit the laser action because it will lead to reduction of the population of E2 which is upper laser level and thus there will be accumulation of molecules in state T1. As a transition T1 to T2 is allowed and the wavelength corresponding to absorption spectrum of T1 to T2 usually overlaps the emission spectrum of E2 to E1. Thus, inter-system crossing will lead to reduction of number of molecules in upper laser level E2 and it will reduce the laser gain on laser output. Sometimes it may even prevent laser oscillation. Thus, for good laser action, the number of molecules in state E2 should reach the threshold level before a significant number of molecules have dropped to level T1. Therefore, it requires very intense and rapid pumping to maintain a population inversion. Addition of oxygen to solution can also reduce the lifetime T1. Thus, oxygen act as a triplet quenching additive. Output. I hope you have understood the working of uh, uh, dye laser. Please try to make a complete diagram of dye laser. From my side, this will, this will be your assignment. The dye laser provides 3 nanosecond pulses in the spectral range of 360 nanometer to 950 nanometer. The typical peak powers are on the order of 10, 10 kilowatts to 20 kilowatts. Dye lasers can be operated in both pulsed, like in ruby laser, continue wave, like in helium neon laser, modes. If a flash lamp is used to pump the dye laser, the output will be pulsed one, like in ruby laser. Because here we are using the optical pumping. And if the laser is pumped by a continuous wave laser like argon ion laser, the dye laser will also be a continuous. So continuous dye laser produce emission with line width in the range of 20 to 40 gigahertz. Applications. Organic dye lasers are used in spectroscopy, holography and in biomedical applications. A recent application of dye laser is its use in isotope separation. So dear friends, I hope you have understood about the construction and working of dye laser. Please mention your comments about the same in the comment section. Please search our website winnerscience.com. Please subscribe and like our channel if you want the laser ebook. If you want to arrange a guest lecture, please email at venusscience at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you. Thanks a lot.